Hey everyone, um, Klaus sends his regrets, but uh, I give you guys a good intro of the venture scene in Europe and talk a little bit about uh, what we're doing at Lakestar. So the, the observations really to, to think about where we see Europe moving forward and what it really takes actually, even from a broader perspective outside of Europe, what it really takes to succeed we think that there are three key things. One is a clear identity center, two is acceleration of scale, and three are very strong financing environments. So in Europe right now, there is becoming more and more of a clear identity center, something that we can develop much more aggressively. Historically, it's been London, but what we're actually finding is that Berlin is turning into a big hub of activity for technology in Europe. The average salaries for entrepreneurs and finding good technical development and talent in Europe and in Berlin is almost 60% of the cost as it is in London. Also, there's a very highly motivated young workforce. A lot more people are coming into Berlin. And in addition to that, the number of foreigners coming into Berlin is actually is increasing every quarter. So in one of our companies, that actually resides in our offices in Berlin, they speak 14 different languages, all in that, in that small location. So checkbox, we think that Europe has a clear identity center or will start to develop Berlin as a strong identity center for us. Secondly, acceleration of scale. I think if you think about a, a company in the US that gets big and immediately it's on TechCrunch, what happens right after that? It gets copycats throughout the world. So that transparency is occurring at a much faster pace. And so this acceleration of scale to go global is increasingly important for businesses to think about early on in their life cycle. And either A, their technology-focused business models like a Skype, which are by very nature global businesses, or B, we think about global rollouts, and that's what we've been doing at Lakestar for the last two years, really thinking about how to get businesses quick, uh, quickly global. So if you think about old Europe, it was fragmented. You were the best classified site in a certain geography, but you know what? Moving from one geography to the next was actually a much bigger challenge. And so what we've done at Lakestar is really think about internationalizing these operations at very early stages and, and rolling them out. And with our last business model rollout, we were able to expand into eight countries, six weeks go live in every single geography. So these are just some of the names that we've worked with in all of the different regions. You can see that we've had operations in Brazil, Turkey, Switzerland, Russia, across the board. So needless to say, I've got a lot of frequent flyer miles racked up. So checkmark, I think this is happening. We're seeing acceleration of scale occur very, very quickly now. But the place that I'd like to spend a little bit more time talking to you about is on the financing environment. And my background also is a, you know, I've been in and around internet for 10 odd years. I used to be a software programmer in the Bay Area. So I've lived in the Bay for most of my life, moved over to London to do finance, and then have been investing out of Switzerland for a little while albeit Switzerland is more just a hub. So where are we today? You know, if we think about the relative populations, and let's compare USA, China, and Europe. The number of public internet companies in the United States at the end of 2011 was 47. In Europe, it was 14. And so, and, and even in China, the growth from 22 to 33 is stark in comparison to only two internet IPOs in Europe. But why is that? You know, why, how can we get more activity and local, local players in Europe to actually stay in Europe? How do we actually create an ecosystem that could rival the United States with 300 million Americans? So where are we? Pre Pre-Facebook uh, IPO, the U.S. had 645 billion aggregate internet market cap. And China, with 1.3 billion, 
had 130 billion market cap. So where do we think Europe is? Or where was Europe actually? Seven billion. Ex-Russia, isn't, isn't that amazing? That's absolutely amazing. So how do we, but we have 500 million Europeans. How do we actually create a financing ecosystem that can rival, you know, the China and the United States, which we would argue, which I would argue, are the two main locations that we should compare ourselves to. Well, wh why is this, right? So we looked at the venture capital spending per capita. And, and take a look at this. Silicon Valley is 1,800 per capita, whereas Europe is only $10. Now, this is probably one of the most interesting slides. If you look at the amount of invested capital and, and the investment rounds, the, the numbers are pretty clear that the median round size in the United States is around $5, sorry, $5 million. In China, it's 10 million, and in Europe, it's three. So what does that mean? It means that every time there's a financing round, you know, people in other geographies are showing up with a bazooka and we've got swart guns. I think that's the key learning, which we need to think about a financing environment in Europe where people are willing and eager to invest broadly, more aggressively for growth. And, and to give you another example of this, we had a company in Brazil that our marketing budget was around 250,000 US dollars per month. In the same month, the US competitor was spending 5 million US dollars just in marketing for that same geography. So again, it, it's more of an ability to deploy capital into really strong businesses and go global early, but you need sufficient capital to be able to do this. And this is why it's important for us to interact with people in the US to really think about bringing these businesses global much quicker, but also having the financing ammunition to be able to do it properly. And so, does Europe have it? Well, it's showing signs of improvement. There's a lot more activity in Europe. But unfortunately, even today, there's still a stark difference when comparing the valuations achieved for US-based companies versus European-based companies. And the environment is developing, but the financing metrics still lag. And this is something that I think we all try and focus on more often. And so, uh, cheers to Marco and the NOAA team for putting this together to make the connection between the two environments. Thank you guys very much.